I never seem to be able to get that, that shot close enough. So yeah. another way to do it. Well, you're using a sandwich. I think you should be doing a bump and run, mate. I think today we need to teach you the bump and run. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's go. What's up? Welcome back to Skins Golf TV. I'm Spencer Towering. And I'm Rob Toby from the Ledbetter Golf Academy. And today we are... Learning about the bump and run shot. We're going to be using an 8-iron and we're going to help you score a little bit better. So I throw away my 56. We don't need that 56 at the moment okay. anymore. Okay, so basically from here, um, well in general, I would say a lot of amateurs, they really struggle in terms of being able to create this scoring opportunity from when they're beside the green. Yeah. You know, they always pull out that sandwich. It's like it's, uh, uh, they've learned from the very beginning that sandwich is the only club that they can use from beside yep. the green. And it's wrong. You can actually use any golf club that's in your golf bag yep. to do a bump and run shot. The eight iron is the club. Okay, but what about the scenario here? We've got a lot of green to work with, haven't we? So exactly. that's why we should use the bump and run. Right on. So when you've got a sandwich, you have to judge how high it's going to go, yep. when it lands, how much is it going to spin, then how much is it going to roll. Yep. So there's a lot of factors that you've got to put into place there. When you pull out a club that you're going to use a bump and run for, something with a lot lower loft, like a seven iron or an eight iron, then all you have to do is land it onto a certain part of the green and let it run the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So realistically, it's going to feel more like a putt than anything else. So you're just chipping over this, this uh, edge of of the exactly. green for the green, letting it roll onto the green and just roll down towards the hole. Exactly. Okay, so you've got more like direction and distance control basically as opposed to all the other factors, that the spin, the height that you might get with the... Absolutely. Yeah, and so, also more chance of sculling the ball, which I do a lot if you're using a 56, right? Definitely. Yeah. So when you're using that high loft, the golf club, you just expose that leading edge a little bit more. And yeah. even if you do make a little bit of a mistake with a chip and run, then yeah. the result's actually going to end up you know, reasonably okay as well. Yeah, you're, so, not, you're not you're, swinging the golf club so fast as well either, are you? Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so to do okay. a chip and run chop, when we set up, it's very similar to a normal chip shot. Like, I mean, you do set up the same way. You have a little bit of weight in the lead leg, your hands sit over the shot. But I think for this one, what you're trying to do is you're trying to reduce the amount of action that you produce with your hands. You know, a lot of people, when they do their sandwich shot, they produce a wrist action, a slight wrist action, and that produces the speed that's needed for a sand wedge. Yeah. When we're doing that bump and run shot, it's almost like that feeling of doing a putting stroke. Yeah. You know, so when you do it, you set up to that golf ball, and it's almost like you can almost set your arms like as if you're getting ready for a putting stroke. Mm -hmm. So when you do the shot, it's back and through, very similar as you're doing a putting stroke. No uh, wrist action, and yeah. it just feels like you're rocking the top part of your body. Yeah. Okay, so basically to do that, we set up. You're putting the pull further back in your stance again? Mm, probably not so much. I don't think I need yeah. to because the loft of the golf club already is enough for us to yeah. be able to create the low trajectory that we're after. Mm -hmm. So I tend to leave my ball position in the same spot. Um, I definitely have my weight in the lead leg, but then after that, it's just a simple stroke with my arms. And I can get that ball rolling pretty close to the flag. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Now that just creates a lot more scoring opportunities for me because I'd be looking to hold that next putt and that's that par save or a bogey save yeah. that some people would really lose. Sure. You know, a lot of people using a sandwich, they might not get that close enough, they miss that, that putt. And then of course, at the end of the game, that tallies up to a lot of yeah, score. Yeah, for me, I mean, I always miss the green slightly. I mean, I'm just around the edge. So I get this opportunity a lot. Yeah. So if I could get down to just an up and down from here, right. that makes a big difference to my scores. It's, That's right. So yeah. this really is scoring potential, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, are okay. you ready to hit some shots? Yeah. Okay. All right, come on in, I'll talk you through. All right, so we've got a couple of extra golf balls here. For your chip shot, you probably bring your feet a little bit closer together and then weight into your lead leg. Yep. Now, you look like you've got very straight and long arms there, like as if you're setting up to do mm. a normal chip shot. Remember, if we tend to make this feel like a normal putting stroke, your putting stroke, you'd probably be a little bit lower yep. and you'd feel a little bit softer so I'm in I'm kind of arms. like lifting my arms up a bit, just like yeah, relaxing right. these a little bit. Yeah. Not too much, but just enough to feel softer in your arms, yeah. Yeah, and, and what about lowering my hands further down the shaft to shorten the, 
Mm, you could make it feel like that. Whatever makes you feel like you're able to create that stroke the best way. Yeah. Okay. Weight into the front. Okay, so just like a putt. So I've lifted my arm. I'm keeping no, there's no, no wrist action at all. Correct. Excellent. And that might actually be in the hole. Go on. <laughs> Damn, that would have been great TV. <laughs> that would have been great TV. That was awesome, man. Okay, okay try again. Yeah, let's do that one again. Okay, soft arms, weight into the lead, and then after that, nice and soft with the arms. Rocking it through. Yeah, so dis distance control becomes very important. Yes, very much. Yeah. Now, something that you could also add to this is after you practice this for a while, you'll notice how far certain clubs fly. Like if you used a nine iron, it might fly a little bit further, an yeah. eight iron a little bit further. Your goal is to basically land this to a position that's, you know, close to the edge of the green, a little bit on maybe, you could say six foot onto the green, mm -hmm. and then from there, running it out. So if mm -hmm. we were a little bit further back, you might want to take a club that has just a little bit more loft to land it in that same position yep. and then run it out. If you're closer to the green, you could probably drop back to a seven iron. Okay, so basically to do a lot of practice with this, you would have to focus a lot on your distance control. When you get better at your distance control, what you'll notice is, is that you have a lot of chances to hold this shot, so it's really good. Mm. When you actually uh, practice this, you could use a couple of different golf clubs. You don't have to just use an eight iron. You could probably use a seven iron, an eight iron, and a nine iron, and go through and find which one matches you the best way. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're playing the shot, you're obviously going to have to notice the things about this shot that are gonna work in your favor. Yep. So when you practice, pull out a bunch of golf balls from the edge of the green, hit some shots to the hole, and what you'll notice is, is when the ball lands on the green, which one is going to be the one that rolls the way that you like? Hopefully, it's not going to generate too much spin, so you'll have more control over it. Yep. And that's the way that you're gonna find that distance control. No rounds for me this week. My golf's been terrible, so I've gotta just practice. <laughs> practice, 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 yeah. and then play. Anyway, thanks for watching another golf uh, episode at Skins Golf TV. I'm Spencer Taring. Until the next time. Enjoy. Practice hard. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> Until next time. Oh, dude, cut for that one. Thanks for watching. Whatever. <laughs> now, we discussed this at length. How are we going to get you guys to subscribe to our channel, apart from, obviously, providing amazing content? Uh, Rob said that you are going to... What are you going to do? You're going to run a marathon if they get 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> Seriously though, we're trying to get 1,000 subscribers. Please click that subscribe button and the bell notifications. You don't miss any of our, our wonderful content. And thanks again for watching Skins Golf TV. Thanks again, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and make some comments for us. Let us know what you guys want. We're really looking forward to it. Cheers. Mine's much funnier than his. <laughs>